Let's talk about the institutional reforms that need to occur in science and technology. I've heard this before, um, but let's try to be specific. Uh, mm -hmm. What are some of those institutional reforms, both in uh, university system, research labs, uh, um, state-owned enterprises. I think in the private sector, it handles itself pretty well. It's a meritocracy. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of music you listen to or, you know, how old you are. If you, yeah. if you do a good job, you're, you're going to succeed. Sure. So uh, what are some of the, um, the, the ways that China can uh, transform the institutional approach to science and technology? Let's first think about, you know, the funding system. Okay. Uh, now, uh, s and funding system in China, uh, now I think it's very much driven by project-based funding system. Now, this was the results of the 1980s reform, because at the time, government money was allocated, you know, you know to institutions. And that created so-called line ball problem, you know, so those institutions they actually do not necessarily do well, but they still get the funding. Mm -hmm. So at the time that was, you know, the reformers abolished that kind of funding system. But instead, I think the government created various kind of programs where I think institutions and individuals have to apply for various research projects. So that has, you know, uh, been the system. And now I think it's, um, it very much entrenched in, in the whole system. I, I think now to the degree that everybody, you know, if you want to do some research, you have to go chase a program and to, you know, to apply for a project. So people spend a lot of time in, in doing, you know, applying for project and, you know, uh, you know, doing the project proposal reviews and then, you know, provide midterm report and then the, the, the final, so the evaluations and so on. It's spending a lot of time on those, those process. However, I think that um, once you're done with those projects, you're done. And there's not a lot of capabilities that was built on those research. So I think in many other countries, you have many sort of research institutions, such as the US national labs. They are not based on individual projects. They are based on, you know, sort of allocation. You know, you have a, your mission set and we allocate, you know, money yearly basis. So I think that's a kind of a transition we also need to think about mm. and not just purely based on project base. So that's, so, you know, to, can reduce a lot of inefficiency in, in the system. Mm. The second is that in terms of a compensation system, currently I think the compensation is set artificially very low. So I, that's what I mentioned that, you know, you know for young researchers, they, they can't even, in, even you know, afford to live a comfortable life in, in some renting, paying the rent or buying a house or whatever. If in order to get you know, so enough pay, you really have to work hard to generate short-term outputs in terms of pay, you know, publishing three or four or five, six papers a year in order to really get that uh, additional so the, you know, payment. So that system also needs to change. And the third is that also people, you know, say move from university to, to industry or move back from industry to the university, that's very hard. So people, you know, cannot easily flow from one place to another. Mm -hmm. And that also, I think, uh, you know, prevented good ideas from flowing from one, uh, from industry to academia, academia to industry. So those are some of the issues that I think, uh, uh, you know, that need to be fixed. Mm -hmm.